I grew up a nice Jewish boy. I went to shul, had a bar mitzvah. And at age 14, my father died. He was my best friend and my world came apart. I began to live a double life. I was still a nice Jewish boy. I said Kaddish for my father every day for the year of mourning. I was even president of my USY group. And over here, I lived this life of a criminal. I sold stolen merchandise in order to help support my family at a time of dire need. Of course, I went to shul every Yom Kippur. I beat my chest and I did tshuva. Didn't mean anything, though. Had no effect on me. In order to be able to live both of these lives, I began to drink and it began my descent into alcoholism. That descent lasted 20 years. At age 35, I was sitting in prison again. After many stints in jail and a prior prison term. One day, early on, I received this letter. It came from my daughter, Heather. She was six and a half years old at the time. Dear Daddy, I hate you. You're a part of me. When you're in prison, a part of me is in prison. And I didn't do anything to go to prison. Love, Heather. I wept that day. And I was still weeping the next day when I saw the rabbi, the prison chaplain. And he said, Mark, what is it? And I said, I'm done. I'm hopeless. I'll never be able to have a life with my daughter again or a life that's decent again. And he said, Mark, don't you know about tshuva? I said, please, beating my chest once a year doesn't do anything. And then we studied. Rambam says that we have to do tshuva as a complete confession. And in order to do it, we have to take a cheshbon hanefesh, an accounting of our soul. Now, to do a true accounting, I have to list my liabilities and my assets. What I did well and what I didn't do well. Shuvah was put into the world before the world was created, and I add, because God knew we would screw up and need a way back. <laughs> the problem today is, we don't know that we screw up and need a way back. For me, my own chuva led me to be accepted as a rabbinic student to the Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies when I was 45 and ordained at 49. I was the first person to ordained as a rabbi after they went to prison. <laughs> <laughs> There's a young man named John. John came to us in 2000 for the first time and kept coming in and out which is what happens with recovery. And in 2002, he gave me a call and he said, I got to come home. John had been in 20 treatment centers. He had lost his first marriage, estranged from his son, thrown out of his family's business. 2002, he began his deep work of tshuva. The spiritual journey of returning, repenting, and having new responses to his life. In 2010, he was welcomed back into his family's business, in fact, as the CEO. And he made a pact with the Immokalee, Coalition of Immokalee Workers in South Florida that is called the Fair Food Pact. That pact guarantees that migrant workers 
will not be sexually harassed. They won't be cheated on their wages. They will have good, decent living conditions and good, decent working conditions. It was a groundbreaking pack. Because John did this, all the other growers in South Florida had to sign on. The entire produce business, the way they do business, has changed because of that pact. Reb Mayer says, for one person's tshuva, the entire world endures. What's the tshuva that you need to do to make your world stand taller and endure? Rabbi Heschel teaches, tshuva is one of God's unnoticed miracles. And unfortunately, we still don't notice it. It's done in truth, in remorse, and responsibility. And it takes harms and turns them into salvations. The first step, where did I miss the mark? Second step, what's the story I told myself to make it okay? Those two are the truth steps. The third step, who was impacted? And I have to remember that I was impacted, God was impacted, and the other person or people. The fourth step, how were they impacted? These two steps are the steps of remorse. I have to experience the pain that the other person had. The fifth step, what did I learn? And the sixth step, what's my tshuva? These are the two responsibility steps. I'm responsible to learn from every in interaction that I have, every experience I have, and I have to be responsible for the tshuva. So let me illustrate it with my daughter, Heather. I missed the mark. For the first eight and a half years of her life, I abandoned her, basically certainly emotionally and spiritually. What made it right? I told myself the story that if I made enough money, she would have an easier childhood than I did. Who was impacted? Heather, God, and myself. How were they impacted? God was impacted because God had to watch as this precious little girl cried and was abandoned and didn't understand. I was impacted because I wasn't the father that I knew I should be and could be. I wasn't the father that my father was to me. And I hurt my own daughter, the person I love most. Heather, Heather was impacted because she learned she couldn't trust. She couldn't trust the person who was closest to her to even show up for her first day of school. She couldn't trust that the police weren't going to come to her house. What did I learn? I learned that love is not a feeling. It's an action. I learned that my actions, even though I felt so low about myself, I had such low self-esteem, my actions have such reverberations. And they impact so many people. I learned that there's nothing worth hurting my daughter for. I learned that Everyone matters, including me. What's my tshuva? My tshuva is that I made amends to my daughter, and in the last 28 years, I've shown up. I've shown up for school events. I've shown up for her life events. I've shown up at times when she didn't even want me to show up. <laughs> and we're in touch with each other every day by text, email, calls, or seeing each other.
Because you see, tshuva is not something that's one and done. Tshuva goes on every single day. Rabbi Eliezer teaches us that we're supposed to do tshuva one day before we die. Since none of us know the day of our death, we should do tshuva every day. Every day we have the commandment, we have the gift from God to do better than the next day. Every day we're obligated to look at our lives and see what we've done well and how to enhance it and what we've done not so well and how to repair it. About 12, 13 years ago, I wrote a book. My brother called me up. My brother Neil's been a rabbi for over 40 years. He calls me up. He says, I don't get it. <laughs> he says, you, they want a book from. <laughs> me, I've been a good guy all these years. Nobody's asking me for a book. I said, well, Neil, you know, in Brochus, he says, oh, no, you're now going to start quoting Gemara to me. <laughs> I says, well, in Brachas it says, in a place where the Baal Tshuva stands, not even the most saintly can reach. Maybe you've just been too good, Neil. <laughs> My brother took a beat and he said, no, maybe I haven't done Tshuva enough. I'm asking you to join me, join my brother, join the hundreds of thousands of people in recovery who do tshuva every day so that we can stand higher and higher in God's world and bring more righteousness, more goodness, more repair to our world. God knows we need it. In this world of separation and division, of comparison and competitiveness, tshuva brings us all together individually and as human beings. Thank you.